you know the GoPro can shoot in 4.3 format? What's up? Corbin Blanton here from CB Films. Did you know that the GoPro can shoot in 4.3 aspect ratio? Well, I'm gonna show you how to take that 4.3 clip and dynamically stretch it into a 16 by nine timeline in Final Cut Pro. The reason why you would use 4-3 aspect ratio when using your GoPro to shoot video is because it uses the full frame or the full sensor of the GoPro. It gives you more top and bottom of your clip. This can be useful for POV shots or shots where you're too close to the subject and you need to see more top and bottom. Plus using the full frame of the GoPro just means that you get that much more resolution. That's enough face cam. Let me get my laptop and let's jump right in. Also, in case you were wondering, I'm using example footage that I shot on the GoPro Hero 10 in 5.3K at 30 frames per second in the 4-3 aspect ratio. Let's go. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go to fxfactory.com and you wanna download their application for your computer. Then you wanna open their application and you wanna search for Andy's Elastic Aspect and download it. It's free. Once you have the plugin installed, open up Final Cut Pro. So first things first, we have to get our sequence right. I already have a 4-3 aspect ratio clip loaded up from the GoPro Hero 10 shot in 5.3K at 30 frames per second in the 4-3 aspect ratio. It's just a little clip of me filming my daughter, ripping on a little trike bike at a, a pumpkin farm that we just recently went to. So, so the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go down to new project and we're gonna title this elastic aspect and you want it to be i'm going to edit in 1080 phd um at 30 frames per second everything else looks good so set it up right there and then you're going to want to drop your 4-3 aspect ratio clip into your timeline and right off the bat you can see that it doesn't fill up the entire screen here because it's shot in a 4-3 format so what you can do is you can zoom it in to fill it up all the way, or to make things easier, you go down here to spatial conform. I believe that's how you say it, and spatial conform. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but change that from fit to fill, and that's in the inspector. So that'll zoom your clip in all of the way so that there is no black lines or edges on the ends of the clip. Now, you could just leave it like this, and this is how you would normally use a 4-3 clip in a widescreen sequence. Um, and you can move the Y up and down, and you can see what's kind of getting cut off here. So you could reframe it like that, or you could dynamically stretch it. Okay, so after you have the plugin installed, you're gonna notice that we have three plugins over here that we can use under Andy's effects. And we're only gonna be using this first one right here, the Elastic Aspect Classic. So. After you have your clip in your timeline and you change the special conform to fill, you're gonna go up to the transform tab here and you're gonna scale Y, just the Y, down to 75%. So that's gonna squish the clip like this. Now you're gonna take elastic aspect right here and you're going to drop it onto the clip. And boom, it looks normal again and everything is being squeezed from side to side. So here's your protected region right here. You can turn it off by hitting this uh, checkbox right here. So that's gonna tell you what you wanna protect. So in this case, I wanna protect obviously my daughter here on the bike. So we're gonna put it kind of right over here and then we're gonna bring up the protection width like so. I usually keep it around like 20, 25, somewhere in there. And then I like to take the elasticity and put that all the way down to zero because that kind of stretches out the edges so it's so it doesn't look like it's pulling so much so i drag this kind of out here and then you have other options here which is like protection overrides so you can override what's going on in the middle of the protected region or you can mess around with the tension right here um, but i don't really use that too much unless i absolutely have to so Basically, this is all that you would do. And then when you are done, you uncheck the protected region and then you render out your file. Wait for this to render. And here's what you got. Here's the original. 
Here's the one where it's zoomed in so there are no black edges. Here's the one that is stretched. You can see why it's so useful using this plugin on a 4-3 aspect ratio shot when you are trying to make a video that is widescreen or 16 by 9. So you also have another option when it comes to using this plugin. If you have a clip where the action is taking place either far to the left or far to the right of the screen, and you wanna avoid that from being stretched too much due to using this plugin, you can actually put this plugin twice on your clip and place one on one side of the screen and one on the other side of the screen and just play around with the options a little bit, like the elasticity and the tension tweak to help properly stretch your shot with also trying to minimize how much the edges are being stretched. So you also have that option as well. Andy's Elastic Aspect. Man, that's hard to say. Andy's Elastic Aspect. Andy's Elastic Aspect. Andy's Elastic Aspect. It's not easy. A little bit of a tongue twister, you know what I mean? So like I said at the beginning of the video, this is for Final Cut Pro uh, because it's mainly what I use. There's uh, a way of doing this with Adobe Premiere Pro and uh, Abe Kisselbitz actually put together a really good video recently and I will put a link to that in the description below if you are a Premiere Pro user. So if you enjoyed this video or it helps you, give me a like. Let me know what you think in the comments and uh, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.